Hello everyone and welcome back to The Little Blue Fly. If this is your first time visiting, welcome and I invite you to subscribe to my channel. So everyone, I would like to introduce you to Gertrude, Keeper of Books, the newest member of our family here at the cottage. I will be taking you all step by step into the process of how I created her. She truly was magic in the making. I literally felt her coming to life with each brushstroke. That being said, let's begin, shall we? So here we are going to begin with this bunny that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. As you can see, it, it is, was $19.99, but I did get it 40% off. And I am going to be transforming it with many different items today. Right now she has that white, the white chippy goodness to her um, and I just would like to warm her up a bit. But first I have to get these glasses off. <laughs> she needs her glasses. She's saying, don't take my glasses. <laughs> I'm prying, trying so hard. I finally get them loose. So if you purchased one of these, you absolutely can take the glasses off. <laughs> so I'm going to start by applying the gold acrylic paint that I purchased from Michaels. And I've worked with this paint quite a bit. I just love the the gold sheen that I get from this particular paint color. And also, I know many of you have seen my dining room table. Um, I Unfortunately, I wasn't on YouTube at the time, so I don't have a video um, of myself painting the table, but I did use this same exact gold. So I will be applying, uh, well, we'll see um, how many it's going to take here, but I usually apply about three to five different coats to get um, my desired color. And as you can see with this first coat, you still see a lot of um, the distressing coming through and that's perfect because I don't want to completely cover that up because it's going to add to the character of this piece. So whenever you see like little flaws or, you know, scrapes, try to keep them there because it, it truly does add character to pieces. And you'll see here in a bit. <laughs> So I just sort of want to take you along and just let you see the transformation of the first coat. I don't know about you. I, you know, I've stated this several times, but when I get to painting my pieces, there's such a piece and um, they really take me, you know, to a wonderful place, a great headspace. They just sort of take, actually the piece just, they take me into their world. This is a very nice and smooth textured paint 
to work with. So here I have applied three different coats and I wasn't going to apply it at the bottom but I decided to um, for the next process I will be doing. It will actually add in more character. So three coats and as you can see the imperfections are still coming through which is perfect. And now we're going to work inside the ears. I purchased this paint, Jolie paint, and it is a matte finish and it's Uptown Ecru. And Jolie paint, it, um, what was her name? Annie Sloan. Um, the makers of Annie Sloan paint now make Jolie paint because Annie Sloan moved to the UK. So now she has distributors there making her paint. And the ones that used to make her paint here in the US now make the Jolie paint. So this is my first time working with this paint. And I will tell you, it is fabulous. Because some chalk paints can be way too runny. Others can be way too thick and you have to get that squirt bottle out. But as you can see, this is just a nice creamy paint. And I love the color. So I'm just going to paint um, the inside of both of the ears. And the great thing about working with chalk paint is you can take a wet cloth and wipe over it to do your distressing. So both of the inside of the ears are completed. And now I'm going to add in just a little bit more texture. So I also will be going on the outside of the ears, distressing them some with a wet cloth. But first I'm going to use this wax paper and I'm going to place it over the ears. It was kind of tricky. So just put the wax paper over and do your best to tuck it down and to the ear. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a template. Make sure to push that wax paper down in there. And just with the pencil, just trace your desired size that you are wanting for inside of your ears. And here we have it. And now I'm just going to cut it out. And I'm actually going to go a little bit wider on the other side because I just want just a little bit more. And 
here we have the very first template. I'll be making a separate one for the other ear because it is a different size and shape. And that's going to work nicely. So this process that I'm doing right now is the same thing I did on my table. So this is a Mackenzie Child's napkin. It is their black flower market design. And I took it to Staples and I had them photocopy the napkin for me. And the most vivid color they possibly could give and you want the paper to be um, you know a nice flimsy paper you don't want to put it on a heavy cardstock and then just looking at the different patterns I just that I'm gonna try to place on the ear I just put my little template over it and I trace it and cut it out And here we have it, the little flower on top. And I wanted to get some of that, the courtly check in there. And this side was a little bit tricky because of the bend, but I was able to get it to work. So now I have both pieces and I'm ready to start the next process. And again, this is the same process I used on my table. This right here is Photo Transfer Medium. It can be purchased at Hobby Lobby. It's a little bit pricey, $9.99. I would tell you use your 40% off coupon if it's not on sale, but they no longer have the coupon, so wait for the sale if you can. And this stuff is fabulous to work with. Very sticky, very messy, but a wonderful product. So I'm just going to first apply the medium to the inside of the ear a nice amount. An even amount, that's important. And then I'm also going to place it onto, as you can see, the print side. So print side is going to go face down. And you will see the back. So I have it in on the right side. And then you just press it in, make sure there's no bubbles. Just have get really good contact. And you might see like little wrinkles inside the paper. That's perfectly fine because that gives amazing character. Again, you just put on the glue evenly don't no clumping but a good amount and then put it down on the image side i kind of got so much on there i couldn't get it off the plate <laughs> it's been a while guys <laughs> and then just press it down really good inside of the ear Now this process for you know, to complete this was a two to three day process. Now you have to let this dry, um, this part, for 12 to 24 hours. And here at the end, I'm gonna use the courtly check again and I'm gonna trim off that excess right there. so I can get a nice good image.
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to the bottom portion. So get our medium again and place a good amount on. You know, and when you put these on, sometimes the image goes on to the painted surface that, that you really, you don't want it there, and that's fine. Just go over it with the paint. So I have a good amount on. And now this strip, so you, you press it along, you know, and, and try to make a crease, but sometimes we can't always be perfect with it. And this is definitely one of those cases. But you, I just wrapped it around, and because it is circular, I'm going to get some creases, but to avoid a majority, I'm going to clip the edges. But again, I'm perfectly fine with some creasing because it does add character. As you can see, it is quite sticky on the fingers, but when I paint, it is so therapeutic. And as you can see here, I'm applying more because sometimes when it, it takes a while to get things wrapped around, the paint, well, the medium dries. It's not paint. So you have to apply more. And even the, the video's going quite quickly. It, it did take some time to get it on there. And then as you can see here, some of the paint came up. No worries at all. I'm just going to add paint right back over that. And at, you can see the medium all over the bunny. Perfectly fine. You can take it off if you want to. I did just a couple pieces, but you'll see why. No worries if it's on there. And you take a wet washcloth and gently just rub over. And the white part, the backing paper, comes off, but the transfer stays on to your surface. I mean, this is just a fabulous technique. Try not to rub too hard because you will take the image off. You know, just really take your time. And as I did, but, you know, again, it doesn't really look that way because I have it going so quickly on the video. But you just keep going around until you see that white layer disappear. And you will see that some of the image is going to come off and that is perfect. Actually, it's, that's perfect that that happens because then it makes it look really aged. And I just, I personally love that. So as you can see up at the top, there's some, some of the image is missing. It's white. But you're going to see why that is so absolutely perfect. So I'll add some gold and I'll show you why this is just gorgeous aging right there. And you don't see that white film on the front part. And where it creases, you really can't get it completely out, which is fine. If you're using the process that I'm about to use. It's all about giving things the aged appearance for me. So I removed it off the inside of the ear. And if you look around the edges, you'll see I went over it with the washcloth and removed some of the paint. 
I need that time-worn appearance. And I will be doing the same around the image. And it's really to your liking. You can distress it or not. So I removed it from the other ear and now we're going to, we're going to work on her spectacles. I did one side already and I'm just showing you how I went about it. So I just added one stripe on both sides. Cause we, you know, you really want to try to get even spacing in there. And then up at top, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a stripe on the left side and on the right side. Now I find when I work with small pieces like this, as you can see, my pinky is having to touch the eyeglass piece because if not, it gets kind of shaky. So I sort of need that stabilizer. So I'm adding one at the top and one at the bottom. So the sides, top and bottom. And now I will add one in between. And this gives a very nice spacing. And I do the same with the arms. I start in the middle and I work out my way out. Now, remember when I was just telling you that it really doesn't matter about the creasing and that is because I'm using some of this wax and I purchased this antiquing wax from Michaels. And just with the brush, you apply a heavy amount or light, you know, it's all to your liking again. And then you just dab it off. If you want it darker, you add more. It adds a gorgeous depth and texture to your pieces. And applying it now to the gold, what it's going to do is really tone down that shine and give it that uh, time-worn patina type of look and feel. And again, you just dab it. And in this particular piece here, there's a lot of different grooves, which is nice because it really helps with the glaze. It'll pool in certain areas. And then it just helps with that nice patina look. So as you can see, one side's really warmer than the other now because of the glaze. And again, you just really apply it all over. You can see those creases and no worries because of the glaze. Now she is almost completed. So I want to go over it. I'm using the Basics Gold from Michaels. This is an acrylic paint. I put on three coats. Then on the inside of the ears, I added the Jolie Uptown Accru paint, matte finish.
and then I did distressing around the ears and I use the Mackenzie Child's napkins. You see it's very nice distressing on the inside and I use the medium to hold the image on. And again, this is purchased from Hobby Lobby. Now for the last step, polyacrylic. It's all about giving it that candy finish. I personally love the candied finish. I normally like putting two to three coats of polyacrylic on. I just like my pieces to really look like that candied apple. And this is the part that just makes you go, wow. <laughs> now I will also be placing them onto her spectacles as well. Just let it get a good dry before you apply the second coat. And it will just turn out absolutely perfect.